this is our, uh, our our meeting for April of the Northampton Disability Commission. You're being now uh, well. There is the gentleman I was looking to. The public has arrived. It's good to see you. The public has arrived. Perfect. Hello, everybody. Hello. Hi. Why don't you join us at the at the table? So yes. So. There is one more, one more member. It does feel um, peculiar, I think we can all say, um, meeting without an ADA coordinator. We will we'll talk about the prospects there, but uh, let's begin with uh, an opportunity for, uh, for any public comments. Phil, I'm told you have something on your... Yes. First of all, I want to thank everybody for letting me speak the last time. I got a little late, it wasn't feeling very well. But, uh, and also, I want to thank you and your wife for coming and talking to the Rotary Club about your committee and your mission. And thank House of LaVarge for not only helping set that up, but uh, also solve one of the problems. It looks like uh, with the trucks parking on the sidewalk in front of the store 24 there next to the Hotel Northampton. That seems to be resolved. However, I have another unresolved issue that's uh, just okay. nothing's changing, and that's when handicapped people go to a gas station, it's Massachusetts law. They toot the horn, they have to come out and pump their gas. That's the law. If there's only one attendant, they have to lock it up if they want, but they still have to come out and pump. They, they cannot ignore the handicapped person. So I'd like to if it's possible for this committee to maybe get a copy of that law. The police don't seem to be aware of it. Uh, when I called the last time, uh, the uh, responding officer had a call to the sergeant, the sergeant had a call to the lieutenant, the lieutenant called the captain, and they all agreed that there is no such law, as I know the rest. So they're just not aware of it. They didn't say there's no such law, they said they're not aware of it. And I don't think many of the gas stations are aware of it. Why not? self service. So I'd just like to see if they maybe follow up. And then I mentioned to you also that if we put a brochure together, I'll try and get the financing to print some copies of it. So to keep me informed on that. Other than that, I'm just going to sit and listen. And thank you for being invited. Thank you. And we'll, we'll take up those points and, and, and respond in the course of the, as Good. we get into the general discussion, because uh, points more than well taken. and. Uh, I'm Marilyn Clare. I work next door to Walter Salvo. And um, this is a change for me to be in a wheelchair. And um, I asked to have a designated spot, a reasonable accommodation, at Walter Salvo, and I was refused. They put up a couple of van signs, but everybody parks there. And the police don't seem to know whether it's against the law or not. And neither does the parking administrator. So. You know, I feel like I'm being denied a right. And like today, I had to park way in the back of the parking lot. And um, because it's both spots taken by, you know, other cars and they're not vans. They're just cars. If they have a sticker, I'm told that they can park there even though it says van, even though it says we'll tow you, even says we'll fine you $150. There's nothing to be done, according to the police. To clarify, you're, you're saying that people are parking there who have no placard? No, they have a placard, they but they're a not a they're not a, a conversion van. And what, what the point of those is because they have a wider access lane and it enables me, because the other ones in the back, all the other spots that they have um, access lanes, they're too narrow. I bang into the other cars if I try to, you know, open my... Um, help me. Ramp. Ramp, thank you. <laughs> and, um, as I get older, I can't remember words. Uh, when I try to put my ramp down, I might be able to get the ramp down, but I can't get down to the ramp and make the turn without running into someone's car. 
So, and there are two spots that are wide enough. And they did put up van signs, but you can't enforce them, so what's the point? So I'm looking for a designated spot, which the law seems to say that I can have, but they won't do it. And I know that you went and talked to Kara at the... Yeah, we'll, we'll report during the general meeting on what that conversation was, okay. which was one of the final uh, steps that, uh, um, um, that Linda Desmond took. Here, uh, I can move my page. At the conclusion of her tenure. Right. So, so we will speak to that in the, in the general meeting under. And, and, uh, So let's proceed with the general meeting and we'll speak to both of the points that have been raised. Um, let's begin with uh, with introductions. I'm Chris Palamas, uh, Chair of the Disability Commission. Judy Kimberly, Secretary. Mary Ann Labarge, City Councilor. Leticia Le Ward, Member. Jean Page, Member. Jim Winston member. I'm a Cornwall official member. <laughs> wow! Why did that happen? It just happened. Miracles happen. <laughs> oh my happen. god. Wow. Does he grab it does the minister of assistance? Holy cow. Okay, um, Approval of the <coughs> the minutes from the, the last meeting. Second in. Yes. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I already gave you that. Correct. Oh. Yeah, uh, that there is that the, the name. Uh, the, the chief's name begins with a K, not a C. Um, what what I would like to do would be reorient the agenda so we can speak to both of the points that have been made as we then uh, proceed to the other issues, which will include reiterating that our new member has been, been approved. So what you're asking is to make a motion here to pull out an agenda item and bring it up, correct? Okay, the, the motion would be that we proceed to uh, new business. So we'll, we'll entertain the thing. What do you mean by that? Could I have a second? I second it. All in favor? Aye. Thank you. <laughs> so to speak to the to the to the two points, um, one is we are going to invite the chief of police. I have a, a draft of a letter inviting the chief of police to come to one of our, our next two meetings. That among the issues there we had said is maintaining the open um, open spaces, excuse me, open public walkways um, to ensure that that uh, HP parking spaces are exclusively used for individuals with uh, um, HP or veterans plates or, or placards. Um, and we can add to this the additional issue that you've raised. But I also have the question, would it be the function of the police department to generally inform um, the stations of the law. We can secure a copy of the law from the Massachusetts Office on Disability. Um, they, they will provide us a, a copy and clarification. That's something we can uh, make that request, I suppose, uh, of Jeff, uh, Jeff Dugan. Uh, but having received that, um, what body should inform basically the the stations within the city of the law. You know, in other words, we want to have the police in force, but a general letter, uh, informational uh, notice of some kind provided. Would that be done by? That might be done by the commission? Yes. Uh, I was yeah, just the commission they're, they're... and the city solicitor and the police chief. That would be a suggestion. Suggestion? Right. Okay, commission, city solicitor, and should police chief, uh, yeah. thank you for that suggestion. Uh, that's the way we'll proceed, so, so let's... Uh, I think also once you get the verification, 
person, then I think you should send it to the city solicitor, Alan Seawall, first to look at the language. Then, once he says, move it, then bring it to the police department. Well, we're going to have the, the chief come to the come to the next meeting. Um, so let's just ask the city solicitor to be part of the, the process of putting that um, that notice out. It's just it's public information. I don't yeah. think the solicitor has to has to review. They'll give us a copy of the of the statute and any guidance. And we are asking that the, the chief to attend the next meeting. Um, we have a number of issues, but that would be to generally get um, a stronger uh, enforcement. The other issue I've listed here that we would like to hear um, discussed with the chief is uh, to hear about training provided to officers on conflict de-escalation um, and interaction specifically that involves people with disabilities. Um, this was mentioned in the mayor's presentation of his capital budget. That, um, that under training for police officers, all officers are given some training. I find that very positive. We'd like to know more about the details of the training, uh, who it's provided for, what's the detail of the curriculum and the content of the training. And I think the interest of the commission would be how to reinforce and support that training. You know, if an officer goes through training, that is not likely to be sufficient. The points have to be reiterated. The more that that it is uh, basically reinforced and supported, it, it's going to take effect. I like that idea. Okay, so we can proceed on that, um, and I will contact the Mass Office on Disability, uh, Jeff uh, Jeff Dugan, to to get it in writing. Uh, thank you. On the the other question of uh, parking. Um, under the statute, a person with a placard can can park in a place, whether it is a van, um, specifically a van accessible space or a general space, with a, a veteran's plate or a, a, an HP plate or, or placard. Um, we did meet with um, the director of the housing authority. It was one of the uh, last things that uh, uh, as uh, Linda was coming to the conclusion of her tenure and there was an opportunity, she had found it a little difficult um, to get a meeting and then she called on, on Judy and me on short notice. So that was apology to you, Marianne, but it was not, uh, it was not a scheduled meeting. It was, y'all get down here and we'll have a chance to discuss this. The follow-up that was that she sent a letter to the the housing authority recommending that um, individual designated spaces be provided. You know, if um, if you're unable to use the space because you cannot uh, lower a ramp or otherwise disembark from the from the vehicle, but they're they're you know they're under general usage, it, there is going to be no solution unless there's an individual uh, designated. Uh, Space. So that was uh, the letter that she sent. Now, we don't have authority. It was a recommendation. Okay. When you say she, you're talking about Linda. Linda does send the letter okay. as the ADA coordinator. Okay. Sent that that letter to the uh, to the director of the housing authority. Has there been any response? We have no ADA coordinator at, <laughs> at this point. Uh, Linda has now retired, um, and we will. That's one of our points of discussion. We'll be awaiting, and it's going to be um, something that we're going to have to attend to how we continue to move forward during what's likely to be, to be a fairly complex transition to a to a new ADA coordinator. We don't even have an active. She said we don't even have an active. active. No. No, we don't have no. any. But you know that that meeting just to to prove why you actually need to have. A, a reserved space. We, when we went there, we parked 
in an HP spot. Mm -hmm. And when we came out to get in the van, it was blocked. Mm -hmm. The woman that blocked us said this is her spot. She'd been trying for 11 years to get a designated one. Right. And they said, no, you can park in the HP spot. Well, so we can H park in the HP spot, well, so we did. Me, Andy Kemp. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. the client. Yeah. Yeah. So that's okay. why, I mean, that's just the case of you can't say that a general HP spot uh -huh is a reserved spot because anybody who can park there can park there. Anybody with a placard mm -hmm. or a plate right. can park there. So you do need a designated spot. Right. That's so true. Yes. My, my suggestion <laughs> is I will, I will um, add the inquiry <coughs> to the Mass Office on Disability on what their understanding is on precedent for housing authorities to, in fact, uh, provide a designated spot. We know that um, that housing authorities are functioned principally under Section 504 of the Rehabilitation Act and the specific regulations, well, they're actually promulgated by the Department of Housing and Urban Development, but they have the same provision of the ADA that a reasonable modification to policies and procedures actually under HUD it would be called a reasonable accommodation can be provided. So I will ask the Office on Disability their understanding of precedent on, on, uh, on doing so. I think that, that it will be a reinforcement if we can find precedent that, that supports your request. Well, and I, know, I have a friend who lives in Chicopee and she had to fight for it, but she lives in an apartment building. It's not, it's not uh, public housing. Uh, and she had to fight for it, but she finally did get they did finally give her a spot with a license plate and and so forth, and nobody else can park there. I don't know if that's a precedent because it's another we, town. But we're going to proceed. Yes, Marianne. Yes. Um, as an example, I think I had talked about this once before. I had a resident at Joan Tobin's apartments up in Lawrence actually had a letter from her cancer doctor in Northampton, she was very, very ill, of having an assigned parking spot. I did call the new director of the housing authority and told her uh -huh. that every time that they drove in after she'd have chemo at the hospital, all the handicapped parking areas were taken. Because uh -huh. visitors come in and they park there. Mm -hmm. So. She was able to. She called her back, talked with her, actually had a sign that was a sign with her apartment number on it, and only her could park there. Okay. Okay. So, to me, as a city councilor, when somebody has severe medical problems and a doctor states that that person needs to have an assigned parking area, uh -huh. that should be done. And it was done. That's a good thing. Okay, yes. so I should ask my doctor to write a letter. Well, this is because she had cancer. She was very yeah. No, you should not need to have a doctor write a letter. You're making the request for this as a, as a reasonable accommodation. Right. Uh -huh. We're going to look for uh, precedent and see if we can get you know, so support through precedent from the, the Office on, on, on Disability. Um, if you feel that uh, a request for a reasonable accommodation, it's a, your next step is to say you want to undertake a formal grievance, uh -huh. um, and you will ask the housing authority for their grievance procedure, <laughs> um, and you will you can basically pursue that line and say you made a request; it is reasonable. There are several tenants who share the the same need. You're making that request. One consideration is that we've done in our, our work with the state, particularly on college campuses, is to say it may be that you simply have too few spaces overall, and that's creating even more pressure. So the authority uh, ought to monitor the use of spaces, and if they are consistently fully occupied at the end of the day, one of the things that argues is you simply need more designated spaces, some of which could be allocated um, specifically to individuals. So I think that's the, that's the line to pursue. Uh, but you've made the request, um, now pursue 
we will uh, gather some information, um, then pursue it on, under uh, a grievance. Mm -hmm. um, if um, you're not satisfied with their action having pursued the grievance, and then your option is to say that you want to bring a complaint to the, um, the federal um, uh, authority under Section 504, and that would be the Department of Housing and Urban Development. Usually there's nothing that perks up the ears of bureaucracy so much as at least the belief it can be exhausting that somebody is just willing to pursue these, um, these lines formally. Mm -hmm. I'm willing. Okay, so <laughs> we, will, we will stay in communication. Okay, you have my uh, telephone number? Do you need that? I, it would be very useful to have it, but I'd rather not have you speak it in the public record. We'll have you write it down. Okay. So I need that to sign private. Yeah. yeah. Also, too, there's one more thing to talk about, which I did bring up to you, Chris, about another problem up in the center of Florence by the Florence Savings Bank, which has handicapped accessible. Ruth has seen it. I've seen it again. Where that, what do they call it? Armor truck. Armor truck, right. I get. Okay. That parks right in the handicapped area. So, so I, and I do know Pat Shaughnessy did send a letter, right, Ruth, to the president of the bank about a year ago. Now they're doing it again. How about at the gas station? That, that, so, that's a spot, the HP spot that's on the street right next to the bank in Florence? Yeah, you know where they have the drive up one? Yeah. It's that street right yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. No, I, yeah, I was up there just the other day. That's awful. How about. Um, okay, we'll, we'll reiterate that in our, in our meeting with, uh, with uh, the chief and. Uh, um, I, I do hope that next month we are meeting with a new ADA coordinator and hopefully have some opportunity to do some, some pre-orientation with the with the coordinator. Uh, following on on Linda's experience, um, it is um, it is a very demanding add-on to an already demanding job to uh, take on the responsibility of being ADA coordinator. So we, we will send that, um, we will send a letter to the chief of police. Uh, what is a, we don't need to await the uh, ADA coordinator's appearance. Do we, uh, we have access to letterhead? How, how would we proceed? City seal. City seal. And send it off from the commission on disability. Right, Ruth? Right. So if I, I give you text, can you use the letterhead? Sure. Yeah. I, I will send you, I will just expand a little bit on this draft and, and send it. So um, we have welcomed our, our newest member who had to follow a long, Stress dusty ball. road. It was stressful. I, I was in her shoes. But that was uh, approved with two city council meetings previously? No, not two yeah, city council meetings. We had appointments and evaluations right. and several applicants that we had interviewed. And I did an investigation to move her on. And that got settled, which I kept in contact with, with her. And it did come to our committee. We recommended all our appointments to the city council. So, mm -hmm. did you watch it that night when your name was brought up? I didn't. You didn't play it. I didn't actually know. Did you get a letter from? I did. I got a letter a week ago. Yeah. And have you gone in to be sworn in? On Friday. Yay. Yeah. And then you've got to make sure you take the ethics commission test. Look, she'll give you an email on there. I'll send you the link to do it. Okay. I did it. Very good. Yeah, it was a little hard, but it was kind of crazy. <coughs> 
My <coughs> All members do have to vote over the, to the online. Our next order of business is the update on the ADA coordinator transition. Uh, there is nothing to report there. We are uh, awaiting a, a, a resolution, a, a final step in, in hiring the, uh, the new uh, director of, uh, of senior services who will uh, be serving as our, our ADA coordinator and we will attempt to be oriented in that regard. Um, let's see. I can pass out two more copies to the members who arrived a little late. Emma. This is a copy of an email that I sent in response to an inquiry from uh, Mary, I do not know how she pronounces her last name spelled M-U-T-E-R. She has been hired by the Massachusetts Office on Disability to coordinate uh, the grants um, that they funded. Now I, I prepared them all. That's all right. Oh yes, here's one more. Yeah, one more. Yeah. It was the second conversation I've had with her, and uh, this is the, I have to say, the advantage of voice recognition software. I am, uh, I am unable to type at this length, but in responding to her email, I, I was uh, a little bit inspired to, uh, uh, to say everything that I had to say, um, and you will find it here, with apologies for a few typos. But the major points were, that um, Linda has retired. She left us in good condition to move ahead. Specifically, she arranged for um, two of the um, uh, folks who are employed under the um, elder employment um, tax abatement uh, program um, to work with me, work with us, on um, moving towards the preparation of what will be an update of the self-evaluation and transition plan. Although the way in which we're proceeding, you know, everything is really a report of activity that will continue. We don't see that there's um, such a thing as a, a final plan that is going to um, define every step that needs to be, be taken. What we have is um, major areas that we have um, that we have identified. Those include our discussions uh, about the ADA coordinator's position. That in discussions with the mayor, um, he's recognized that this is a very, very demanding additional set of tasks to add on to what is appropriately a more than full-time position. So that ultimately we are arguing for a restructuring and one potential way of doing that would be to look to have a position that was specialized in terms of the uh, disability and ADA related skills um, and a possibility would be to work out a combined funding with another community that wants to move in the same direction. Beyond that, um, we simply weren't able to proceed quickly enough at this time because that's gonna, gonna take some additional work. I then proceeded, you will see at the bottom of page one, to say the following are highlights and priorities. Uh, they will be documented and explained in greater detail along with the report with graphics and photos. Um, and I then list under two categories, building and facility accessibility being one, and the second being, uh, well, we then move on to ADA coordinator restructuring, effective communication. Um, it is those that I would like to ask you to, to look at. Um, and uh, let me know at the next meeting if there are any additional items um, that you feel should be identified in the plan. These are broad policies and procedures that we're identifying. 
We are also identifying specific building and facility accessibility issues. We have received the grant, as you know, for $250,000 from the Massachusetts Office on Disability. It needs to be expended by, by June 30th. Uh, Mary Ann informed me that um, a, a specific order will come before City Council meeting next Thursday. This Thursday. This Thursday. To also provide for a contingency fund to support that process as they move ahead with the expenditure of 250k because all construction and planning projects have that that factor of unexpected cost um, the order will be for um, the designation of for reservation of up to 35,000 uh, for a contingency fund in case of cost overrun. I clarified in conversation with Marianne, these are not the design funds. You will recall that the commission committed 5K and the city $20,000 for the development of the, the design documents to guide this construction. So beyond that, I mentioned um, here a number of other priorities which you can review but i have to say the one that i think um, is most significant is the fact that we have no fully accessible toilet room of when city council meets city council meetings obviously go on for extended periods of time That's there true. are hearings that can critically affect you know um, the interests of a particular individual or a particular family um, uh, someone who uh, had need to use an accessible restroom would not be able to do that uh, while city council is in session that i think becomes among the very high priorities that we have to address in that in the transition plan so please take a look at these and uh, come to the next meeting you know, prepared if if you have any additions and, and to explain um, what they might be. The process is I'm meeting um, weekly now with uh, uh, with Doug. Excuse me, I don't have his last name, um, but we introduced that at a meeting of the of the commission, um, and we are working now um, um, weekly on the on the process of writing. This is going to be a more extended document than, than usually appears as a self-evaluation and transition plan because I thought in, rather than a rather terse bulleted document, well, we need something here that is going to be punchy enough uh, and, and graphically effective enough that we're going to get you know, a closer read than probably has been done in the past. If we're going to be making some fairly dramatic recommendations, like the need to take seriously um, you know, the potential cost either of putting a fully accessible toilet room um, there uh, adjacent to council chambers, or to find an alternative place to meet, you know, the, the document's got to have some impact. So that's what we're going to aim at accomplishing. I for the new coordinator, I have someone in in mind, but I haven't talked to her yet. But I have someone in mind because she 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 knows people with disabilities. I I I have someone in 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 mind. She's in my walk club, but I have someone that I think would be good to put to for for the coordinator. Um. That's going to take some time before we get to a point when any such position might be established. You know, what we have to do in the transition now is orient a new person who's been given the position, explain to them what the, the communications that we've had with the, with the mayor, and I hope we don't find ourselves being knocked back uh, too far in, in this process. We've had uh, some good conversations, I think some real 
um, you know, general concurrence that, that we need to move forward. You know, what we expect this commission is simply going to be generating more work to be done in the city. Our aim is to be more active and more on focused on a broader range of details. To do that, ultimately, it's going to be, we need an active coordinator. Chris, just curious, have you gone to the council chambers to look at the equipment that is there? Sound equipment. I'm not as yet. I haven't had a chance to do that yet. Needs to be done. Yep, that's all part of our, our unfolding process and, and, and it is, uh, you know, it is time consuming, you know. Um, I'll get Laura the call tomorrow it. and maybe before city council meeting, take a look at the report. But what I need to do is get a technical person, you know, and we, we need to find someone who's got that specific uh, expertise because it's not only council chamber we okay. also have the academy of music and we have the need for for portables as well also chris this has been going on for a long long time and you're i'm hearing you say that we need to get somebody as an expert or whoever has the mayor been involved and helping us out doing this? That's my question. We're currently doing this, you know, as the commission, and then we have to have to present to the mayor. But For the money. Yeah. Sounds yeah. like a plan. We don't know what the we don't know what the costs are yet. What are the aggregate? So we're looking what are the aggregate costs and priorities? What we're looking at is the high school, correct? And what else? City Council Chambers, correct? Yeah. And JFK. Portable system. And what about your elementary schools also? Well, if you have a portable system, or more than one portable system, then we can move it on to an right. No. We know that we have significant deficiencies at, at this point. To what extent, what equipment should be purchased, where it should be hardwired, where it should be portable, um, that's, a, that's a substantial proposition sorting out even that piece of the puzzle. Ruth, how long have we been doing this? Forever. And how about this? Even, even Phil Sullivan, he's out there right now, he'll tell you, when he was a counselor, Way back then. We had meetings with the Academy of Music. That yes. Were, what? A year, two years ago? Two years maybe? ago. And they were That's getting true. funding and they were putting in a whole system there. But then, you know, they were happy or they were happy or everything. Did the Academy state that they were getting an assistive listening system? Yes. And they did. To the best that they were mm -hmm. Is that. Is that in the notes and minutes of the commission? Because yes. if it is, would you please secure those? Sure. Because I mean, this is on a, on the list, and this is why this is an ongoing proposition. And I'll tell you from my experience, what it comes down to, my friends, is if we make the demands of the city and they are not fulfilled. And then it has to be taken as civil rights complaints. Mm -hmm. And I personally, am, as an advocate, will take that stand when we submit these requests to the city. If they are not acted upon in reasonable time, I will be perfectly willing to enter into a federal complaint or suit to the Department of Justice or the various agencies that fund the department. That what's that's what gets the squeaky, you know. Yeah. It gets it done. If you sit right. back and take simply the delaying tactic, but that's why this is an update of our self evaluation and transition plan. So you have to call it that guy in Washington do a new four thousand dollar yeah. Well, right. We do have to, and people Dying will respond. Percent. Well, what currently is the status of, of ADA compliance <laughs> in, in the federal government? And um, 
we had information Title III has been severely compromised. That does not affect Title II. And there is still a litigation group at the U.S. Attorney's Office in Boston. So, um, you know, that's where we're going it from, from my point of view. I'm invested a lot of time in doing this with, with y'all at this point. And you all have said you have been, um, what would the word be? Something. What would you, how would you describe the previous promises that haven't been fulfilled? All I can tell you is, is personally, you know, that, that I, wouldn't, I wouldn't tolerate that. Um, you cannot be sure if legal action is going to work or not. But that's what goes behind it. We as advocates will come out with a, a total that's going to be, um, it's going to be very substantial of projects that need to be undertaken by the city. Right. Um, there will then be a negotiation back and forth. As advocates, we look for a more rapid investment, and necessarily those who try to preserve their budgets will push back. The thing that is not tolerable is to accept as a negotiation to be pushed back to a point where reasonable progress is not being made. And that's what my frustration over time I've seen too often. The wonderful thing about Title II of the ADA is it requires a plan. Once you have a plan and put it down, the things that we've looked at as previous plans were simply too sketchy. They don't define effective communications in previous plans, at least as I recollect them. I could be corrected. Um, on that, but all of that is going to go into it. But when we have this, that's why I really do need a technical analysis and I, I need some real projection on what the potential cost of these different elements are. Another piece that I, I do want to do um, for the interim plan is that I, I, I want to ask your approval and I will ask for a motion to have Rob Everly the Information Technology Compliance Coordinator for the five colleges to do an assessment of, it's a very brief and initial assessment of um, a number of the key web pages um, on the website and to use the same mode of analysis we've used for the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. He should be able to do that for um, my request would be um, for a um, motion that would approve an expenditure of no more than $500. I'll make that motion. I second it. And that is specifically for the information coordinator of the five yep. colleges to uh, review a, a sample of three to five web pages. Uh, motion? Second Seconded? No, I first. Is there Second. any discussion? All in favor? Uh, I have a question, you know that. Too, but let me just finish this. Uh, that will be important because we've got to submit this report to MOD. Mm -hmm. And in part what we're we're saying oh I need to pose. <laughs> but when we submit this report to MOD, mm -hmm. I wanna have that be a wake-up call for them that maybe they should probably be looking a little bit more in detail at what they're getting from municipalities. I, I did say to them in follow-up, could you put us on the phone with other communities that have received these planning grants from the Mass Office on Disability? What are those other communities doing? Uh, why in the world did we get such a high proportion of the, the money available in the state? So. Can we finish our volume? You put me back yeah, on track. We need to go back, yeah, we need to yes. Okay. <laughs> okay, so I first, she second. second. All, second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? I need queuing very often. There we go. It's one of, it's one of those no, things. That, that um, so you know the you know the art place in Northampton, that new art building. Yeah. I don't know if they have like a Sudbury, because that's where my walk choir process. But you know that you know where that where the glasses place is on on that on that street. Yes. You're talking off of um. 
It's on Holly Street. On Holly Street, the mm -hmm. new art building. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if they have a because because in my rock car we have like a, a person who's like in the wheelchair. But I don't know if they have like a like a. Alright. Now I'm like they. It's like like for like in the bed in the bathroom like I don't know if they like a is, is this a city-owned building? No. It's private. No, well, we're, we're focusing on are the mm -hmm. buildings owned by the, the buildings owned by the city. How about thorns? No, that's we're only talking about city buildings. What we were surprised was that I hadn't realized that the Academy of Music is owned by the city. Yeah, I did not know oh, yeah. that. There are obviously substantial additional needs there. Look, we're meeting with the police chief somewhere in the not too distant future. It would be good to meet with the executive director of the Academy of, uh, the Academy of Music. They apparently have some general capital plans around uh, priorities there. What they need to do is have a complete plan that would address all of the accessibility issues, not just communication, but access to the to this stage and, and technical areas as well. I do know when we did go and talk at the Academy of Music, they could not guarantee that they would do exactly everything that needed to be done to the finances. So as far as what they've done, I cannot answer the question. But they did not have the full funding. The, the Academy has made good progress on the front of the house. And the mayor said in the capital budget that some additional funds are being allocated for additional, which would also address the side towards the back. What we don't know is whether they have a complete plan. And when Again, you say you the back, you mean the stage? Do you mean the stage? Yes, the, the stage, the stage and the technical part. areas yes, and yes. all of those oh. areas at, at the academy. You, you can't even know what your fundraising goal is until you have someone give you a complete plan with some kind of rough projection of the dollars. Mm -hmm. There has been progress, but, but there, there, there needs to be more. Do you think they'll put a, a lamp in the back, like, because we have, because, like, the backstage, because, so they don't have to go through the front, like, because we ha have, like, concerts there, do you think they'll put a lamp? In the, in the in the yes over time that's what we're that's what we're um, looking cause, for because so this one person so she doesn't have to go through the 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 front like like when we do our shows and stuff because because in the you know in the way back when you go mm -hmm. yeah because because we we go up there and like we have like our our own room but they should probably like a ramp out there so she doesn't have to go for the you front. know you know more about that building than i do <laughs> i i i i, I, I do close but it, it it has improved over the years it just said uh, you know some additional big steps that uh, um that happened just there. like the uh, fourth library the same situation the city only can allocate so much money through capital improvement. That's but true. we have uh, Mike Ryan, Judith Ryan, many volunteers who did a huge fundraising on the elevator. Um, Tons of money there. That was all done by fundraising. On, on which elevator? Ford's Library. Ford's Library. Library. Ah, yes. I think they had raised over, what was it, 207000 I, I think actually Forbes is one of the, um, yeah. is having their advisory commission meeting in, in, uh, and we've actually forwarded that email and with, you know, in, inviting other participation on their advisory. Obviously one could make a career out of serving on, on advisory committees on the oh, uh, related areas. Is there any other business that you need to make friends after today? No. Uh, I just want to say, so we have now officially eight members on our commission. So we do have, we can have another member. So, motion to adjourn? Woohoo! Motion.
motion to adjourn. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Adjourned we are.